Vintage Story is a somewhat difficult survival game that you, that looks deceptively similar to Minecraft, but I assure you it does not function the same. When I heard that this game has an automation system, me being the redstone nerd that I am, with too much time on my hands, spent 12 hours uh, going over and figuring out how this works. And it is incredible how wrong the wiki page for this is. So I'm going to start off by listing every component. So, and I'm going to start with how it all starts. Windmills. Now, in order to make a windmill, you need a windmill rotor and sails. A windmill rotor has one connection point, and that's on the back here. And this can connect to things. The windmill says that it has a uh, it says it has 20 kilonewtons of torque, and that's 20 kilonewtons per sail at layer added, and it can have up to five sail layers. How the speed is calculated is you take its local wind speed, and then it gets a bonus for being up high. For every block above 10 above sea level, you get an extra 1%, up to 50%. So, on default world settings, you want to place this sail... 170 blocks in the sky to get maximum effect but no matter how fast it spins it still has the same 20 kilonewtons per sail layer that doesn't change i hate the 20 kilonewtons measurement and i think it's much easier to think of it as having a certain level of energy every 20 kilonewtons is the equivalent of 300 energy and that'll be important in a bit because every single one of these devices has a certain energy cost, and it will not, it'll, the entire system will stop if you don't have enough energy to supply what you're trying to power. If you have 300 energy and you're using 150 of it, it will spin half as fast. It's completely linear. Which brings us to the first thing axles. A wooden axle has a cost of one energy. So for each one of these I add, it's one energy subtracted from the 300 I have here. And so after I reach about 300 of these axles, it will, it will keep going, but after anything above 300, it will just stop. But if I w and that will bring us to the next thing, angled gears. If you have support on your axles, you can have an angled gear. And angled gears will help you turn it 90 degrees. This has a cost of 1 as well. So right now its cost is 1, 2, 3 because of gear, and 4. And that allows it to do this. Some cool things you can do with the gear is you can also place gears on gears on gears. On gears on gears on gears. But gears only have 2 access ports the you can only access it on the back and on one of the one of the sides and you cannot have gears on multiple sides at once as cool as that would be and so right next is the large wooden gear and this has a cost of eight so one of these is the equivalent of eight axles and and when I'm talking about that, I mean, I mean, it's eight if you power it at the same speed as everything else. So this right here would be a cost of one, two, three, eleven. So this is costing eleven, but the outside here is spinning faster because this normal gear has eight teeth and this large gear has forty-four teeth. That means the ratio from this to this is 5.5. The wiki says it's 5, but the wiki is wrong. It's 5.5. So now anything attached to this will be spinning 5.5 times faster than this, but it also costs 5.5 times the amount of energy. So it's now 1, 2, 3, 11 plus 5.5 plus 5.5. So this is an energy cost of 22 now. And now it's 33. And now it's 44. And it gets pretty crazy pretty quickly 
but you can also do this in reverse and shift down. This is now 8 divided by 5.5, which is approximately 1.5, but anything now connected to this is also divided by 5.5. So if I just add 11 axles, that would be the equivalent of two axles because they're spinning slower. So that lowers the energy cost, but it also lowers the speed by 5.5 times. Our next important thing is the transmission. Now the transmission on its own is an energy cost of one, and it does absolutely nothing. But you can actually put, it has two access points, one on each side, whereas I forgot to mention the large gear actually has uh, six access points, the bottom, the top, and then one on each side, so it has six. The transmission has two, and it does nothing, but it has an energy cost of one until you add a clutch. Now a clutch, if you put it next to it, it'll allow things to go through. So now, anything after this is also receiving power. Next is the... Uh, the brake. Now the brake is really unique, in my opinion, because this has a cost of zero. You can transmit signals as far as you want using a brake. If we go to this example over here, I have two side-by-side -side comparisons. A motor of this speed can only support 13. So, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now that we have 14, it has stopped completely. But at the same speed, since a brake has zero cost as opposed to the axle's one cost, you can travel signals as far as you want, making, I'm pretty sure this is a glitch or an oversight, but brakes have zero cost until you toggle them. Now they have 6,000 cost, causing most systems to stop instantly. But it is very possible, if you have enough power going, that you can just ignore this limitation completely. Despite the brake being here, all of the power in this system adds up to more than 6,000. And now before I move on to the rest of these, I want to talk about a few more basic a few more things about the system. If you have something spinning counterclockwise and you also have something spinning clockwise, the, on the only way to make something switch directions currently is by using a large gear. And so having one on one side, one on the other side, they will be in opposite directions. Oh, yeah. So that's the only way to reverse a direction. And secondly, if you add multiple motors, connect them to the same system, their, their powers will stack by simple addition. So if we add two windmills to each other, instead of, it, it, it'll just add them together. Pretty plain and simple. So simply put, adding 300 to, oh, to 300 here, this system now has energy of 600. And so if you were to use half of that, it will go half speed. It's pretty simple. Next we have a wooden toggle, and this on its own does nothing but it does cost one energy. Just get that one out of the way. Next up is the quern, and this has two inputs, one on the bottom and one on the top. So despite how it may look, there is an input to this on the bottom and also on the top, but it needs stable ground. So in order to power it from the bottom, you need to have the axle there ahead of time also power this from the top, but this takes 200 energy. 
So this should be able to power it. Oh, I'm getting a penalty because this is below sea level. If you have your, if you have your uh, windmill below sea level, it will receive a penalty. So next we have the pulverizer, which is a whole assembly. So I'm just gonna do it over here. But the pulverizer has two inputs, one on each side. And this takes a, this takes 170. So corn takes 200, this takes 170. So, and this is used to crush rocks and stuff. Remember the wooden toggle from earlier? Well, if used with a health hammer, it has a power drain of 318. So this is used to hammer an anvil, which would be like so. And 318 is quite a lot. It's two inputs, one on each side. And it is quite annoying. This is an Archimedes screw, and an Archimedes screw with a port. Each one of these are used to transport items upwards. They have input on the top and the bottom. So if you want to power them from either side, that's good. And so if you have one with a port, you can use shoots to put it in. Da -da -da. And so, chest, shoot, that uses 30. So everything I dump in here will go through the top of the Archimedes screw. And so what people usually do with this is they automate their corns, their pulverizers, their other things. But the most common setup that you can find, we just need some sails. So in having a setup like this, they're able to have four windmills and the uh, direction the windmill is facing does not matter. It still gets the same amount of wind. And the geniusness of this setup is that from here you can travel it downwards, and each of these axles, since they are downshifted, are only costing 5.5 uh, times less than what they would have. And so down here, we can, we can upshift it to get back to normal running speed. And why did the wind stop? There we go. So now anything done after this point will be back to what the shift level that we want. And another common thing to see is a gearbox setup. So if we were to take this from here, common to have two gears. So it's common to see a gear shifting setup like this. This is a three gear setup where the bottom one is a transmission connecting these two, which would be normal speed. This middle one would be slow speed where it connects the top of this to the side of this. And that would be a downshift. And then the top one connects the back of that to the top of this one, creating an upshift, making everything faster and 5.5 times more expensive. And so this is another common thing along with that. These are the two most common things you will see used. This is an example of one built in survival. As you can see, the three, the three gearbox shift the gear shift system up there will be the windmills and what i have here is my auto hammer 
my pulverizer, and my corn, each having their own off switch. So, can turn that on, that on, this on. Oh, ran out of energy. That's too expensive for the system right now, so I'm gonna have to do a downshifted. So it's less expensive on the system. That's the sort of thing that, yeah, that the gearbox is useful for. And fun thing about the corn. Yeah. Anyways, I should probably stop playing this game because I have other things to be doing. I have so many half-done redstone projects, but these gears are just too fun, you know.